Hollywood director could invent a character like this. No couturier could envisage such glamour. And after merely observing a photo, no one in their right mind could forget her. Something greater had the power to bring her into being. And something greater had the kindness to take her away. In today's Masters episode, we're having tea with Princess Diana. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome back to the Masters series. Now today we feature the beautiful Princess Diana. I'm so excited to do this episode. I started writing part of this script, I think it was two or three weeks ago and I didn't know there was going to be this big royal interview about to happen. So apparently Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are doing some kind of interview that's going to be launched this week. I haven't seen it. Here in Australia, it's the 8th of March. But I did watch um, Josh Peters and Archie Manners do this brilliant interview. Uh, they, the video is called We Proved Royal Experts Lie about Harry and Meghan. So this is a really good um, video. I'll link to it below so that you can watch it. But yeah, the timing of this video is, is quite cool because there is quite a bit of royal news happening at the moment. So uh, I didn't time it that way at all. It just so happens that I happen to have this script ready now, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I, um, I put this together. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below. One other thing I wanted to mention was um, that I, I do really love Princess Diana. I'm definitely a fan of hers. I remember when I was a teenager growing up, I, I think I was actually a little bit skeptical of Princess Diana. I thought she might be um, a bit of a drama queen. And I think I thought a little bit more along the lines of say someone like Christopher Hitchens, interestingly, I, I had that view back then. But I think it was around 2014, 2015, you know, 2016, these kind of years, I started to watch a whole load of uh, royal documentaries. And because I was working from home a lot, and I, you know, with lunch, I would watch like a new documentary each day kind of thing. And I also watched a lot of um, David Icke and, and different things in the build of the world, you know, just, just to understand different points of view and different people. And I came to see that, wow, I think Princess Diana was actually really quite incredible. And I didn't give her, yeah, the full kind of respect and admiration that I could have while she was alive. I do remember um, being a teenager, I do remember what it was like to watch the news and find out that she had left. And, you know, I was very busy with my studies. I think it was, um, gosh, what year was it? I was finishing high school, I think. And I was kind of busy. But now, you know, when I look into her life, uh, I just think, gosh, wow, she, she really she really came to, to do some incredible work. So I hope this script um, does impart some of that, some of what I've come to, right? As opposed to how I used to think. But of all the royals, and I was thinking about all the different royals, and because I've got all their charts, they are absolutely brilliant to study because the times are very accurate. We've got all of the events uh, of their life. Everything's very, very well documented. Everything's very precise. So, they are magnificent to study. They are really, really, really good to study. Um, you know, you can easily get the information and it's very accurate and precise information as well. So that's why I really like working with their charts. And my favorite of all of the royals is, all of the British royals anyway, is um, Princess Anne. I think she is just fantastic. I think she's the real deal too. I don't think she is dodgy or any of that. Certainly all the stuff that I've watched about, you know, from David Icke and, and different um, theorists who, or people who, you know, tell alternate versions of history, 
There's a lady in the Netherlands, I love to watch her stuff. She's got some amazing stuff about the build of the world and how things really work. But no one's ever mentioned anything bad about Princess Anne. And another thing that's really interesting about her is that she's a great example of the collective consciousness correctly intuiting things, which is something I'm going to talk about in this script. Oh, I've talked too much already. Maybe I'll cut some of this down. But um, Princess Anne, interestingly, the British public say that she is the king that Britain never had. Now, when you look at her chart, she's got sun in the 10th house. How perfect in her birth chart, right? That's a king star. That is a king, kingly type position. So I always think that that's a great example of the collective consciousness, you know, of the people correctly intuiting who someone really is without seeing their chart. You know, they're they're right on it. We've got some astrological proof uh, to show that their intuition is correct. All right, well. Let's get on with this script. I'm just going to read it out as is. And as always, feel free to let me know in the comments below how you like uh, this kind of thing. But I hope this is, I hope this has the right level of um, astrological information. I didn't go too deep. Uh, You know, I'm telling a broader story here. So let's get into it. All right. So imagine a planet in the grip of a controlling establishment. A place whose good-natured inhabitants work hard, give all their time for an inch of progress, only to find themselves standing still. And furthermore, only to be taxed, indebted, and kept under constant surveillance. Now imagine for a moment, as hard as this may be, that you are God, and that you're tasked with creating a being who might dare to take this establishment on. In my mind, that's exactly what Princess Diana's assignment here was all about. On the chessboard of life, God placed his most stunning and chiseled piece and gave her a brilliant set of stars with one mission, to do battle with the Queen. Born directly into British nobility, we see here some elementary evidence of the starlit weapons built into her chart. Mars Rahu conjunct in regal Leo Maga Nakshatra in the 10th house. Mars Rahu, the ability to fight. Leo Maga Nakshatra in the 10th, the very pinnacle of the established world. While Mars Rahu took time to ripen and mature, the Mahadasha of Rahu and Antardasha of Mars initiated her entry into the firm, the royal family of Great Britain. Some might have called that entry point a marriage, but I prefer to think of it as an induction into the job of of the millennium. Speaking of marriage, Diana's chart is the best example that I've found so far of the Viva Saham point in action. When calculated correctly, Viva Saham sits in Virgo at nine degrees, 23 minutes. Both Saturn and Jupiter are almost exactly conjunct, only two to three degrees away from that point on the day of her marriage, 29 July, 1981. It's interesting to note that Pluto is also in the house, making it one of the biggest weddings of all time. Furthermore, from the moon, all this activity was in the eighth house, indicating major transitions and in-laws. And from the ascendant, it was all happening in the 11th house, the house of hopes, dreams, and wishes. Marriage is one thing, But what about love? In many client charts, I can easily spot true love yogas. The potential to find real love and happiness in this lifetime isn't rare from my experience. When glancing over Diana's Varga charts, Venus is twice found in Capricorn and several times in houses of work, places where Venus would rather not be. Hers was a working Venus. While the Shadbala was extremely high and the Ishtafala also magnificent, her radiant health and beauty was not put on earth for pleasure or fun and could even be considered another weapon issued by God to garner the love of the public. Never before had a single person's beauty moved and made markets. Venus in Taurus, seventh house. 
Photographers could pay their rent for months from the sale of just one photo. Newspapers flew off the stands and clothes would sell out in minutes. How did the royals take that? Well, for a family who tightly controlled, stage managed and even manufactured their own popularity, this natural beauty was definitely seen as a threat. Perhaps the last time beauty was weaponized by the gods was when Vishnu became the utterly irresistible Mohini, the goddess of enchantment. But back to Diana. She was even given a great big flashlight to dispel the darkness. Sun and Mercury conjunct in the eighth house equip Diana with antennae for all things unspoken. It's documented that she found Jimmy Savile to be creepy after he held and kissed her hand on just one occasion. Though Venus was the obvious star of this astrological show, I believe at the heart of her being was a dedicated humanitarian. There's footage of her running barefoot in the grass, of holding the dying, of being at home in a two up, two down. Here in the fourth house of home, the part of the chart where the heart beats, lies who and what she'd spent lifetimes perfecting. Ketu in Aquarius. Now Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian and the collective consciousness, and anyone who bears it bears some responsibility for the one, for the all. She died just before her second Sarisati at age 36. This is incredibly sad, as it's the time when Saturn matures and the D9 chart really starts to deliver new experiences, experiences she never got to live out. Just as the collective intuits that there's something not quite right with some of the billionaires at the top today, the collective back then rightly intuited how much was good about the woman who incarnated to shake the shackles that bind us. How many people found themselves irrationally crying and weeping when she went? To me, that was proof of that tremendous Aquarian energy at work. All those people formed a flash mob so God could cry through them. I think it was her brother who pointed out a major irony of her life, that she was the girl given the name of the ancient goddess of hunting and was, in the end, the most hunted person of the modern age. Well, thanks to astrology, I can see that God doesn't send any of his prized possessions down here without a weapon or two. Same is true for me, and if you'll believe me, the same is true for you. So I hope you enjoyed that very brief overview of Princess Diana's life. There is so much more to say. I didn't go deeply into Varga charts. I, I could have talked a lot more. I could have talked for an hour, but I, I didn't. And uh, there, there is a lot, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got more insights to share, please do put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you, what you thought of her. You know, were, were you a fan? And uh, did she touch you in some way? So please do let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.